Okay, so let us discuss um, the second discrete distribution that we'll use in the hypothesis test. Right, so I require as Poisson. Alright, so for Poisson distribution, we are going to use it to test population mean as well. Okay, then um, maybe this one you need to, there's a typo here, so I think you need to cancel it off. Now. No matter, is it a small or large sample size, it doesn't matter, but we are going to use it to test the population mean only. Alright, so if you have a look for all the steps, you will see that generally the idea is still the same, like what you learned before. Okay, and then because this is the discrete random variable, therefore uh, we only use the p-value approach. Okay, calculate the probability. So it is the p-value approach. And then if you look at step number one here, you will see that the now and alternative hypothesis, we are going to test about the lambda. So the lambda here, we also uh, call it as population mean, all right, in Poisson. And then for normal distribution, we use the mu, all right? But normal, uh, generally, they are having the same meaning, which is the population mean. Okay, then this is step one. Or now an alternative hypothesis you have to set up first. Then the second step is you need to calculate the p-value, the probability, by using the observed value. So again, observed value usually will be given in the question. All right, then th the third step is you need to uh, compare the calculated probability with the significance level. So usually for this step, I will try to draw a graph or a simple diagram to help me to understand it better. Then I will decide. From the graph or diagram, I will decide whether I want to reject or accept the null hypothesis. Okay, then after that is conclusion. All right, so if you look at the steps here, generally it is the same, just that when you want to calculate the probability for Poisson distribution, you have to use the Poisson formula, all right, which is E negative lambda, then lambda power x divided by x factorial. All right, previously, if binomial, you use binomial formula, ma. So for this one, you have to use the Poisson formula, okay? So this is what we have for Poisson distribution in the hypothesis test, okay? And after that, because in previous lesson, right, we also learned um, when can we change Poisson become normal, all right? So we have to apply the same thing here as well, all right? So in previous, maybe in, uh, in the earlier chapters that we learned before, when lambda is more than 15, you can calculate the probability by using normal distribution because when lambda is more than 15, we approximate Poisson become normal. And also you need to apply the continuity correction. So if you already forget this part, then you have to refer back to your chapter one in A2 level stats. Okay, all right. So when your lambda is large, which is more than 15, then X is normally distributed. Lambda is the mean, lambda is the variance as well because for Poisson distribution, the mean and variance are the same. Okay, then in standardized form, this is the test statistic for Poisson approximate normal distribution. Okay, so again, like what I mentioned before in binomial one, please don't use this one. Please don't confuse it with this. Alright, so we are not going to use this, but we are using this in the Poisson distribution. So this is only for originally normal distribution. Okay, eh? and then when Poisson distribution can be approximated by the normal distribution, both, both critical value or p-value approach can be used to carry out the hypothesis test. So as what I mentioned before, in my steps, usually I would prefer to use the p-value approach. Alright, so in marking scheme, they will provide you the critical value approach as a main solution. All right, but they will accept both okay, in your answer. All right, so in general, the idea and everything are very similar like what you learned in um, binomial before. Okay, so let us discuss a few examples here. Okay, let's have a look for example 24. Okay, so uh, when you read the question, right, first of all, you need to know like, actually what keyword tells you that it belongs to Poisson distribution. So of course, you see the keyword Poisson. If let's say they didn't tell you this is Poisson, also you can look at the keyword per match. They will give you an interval, some, a certain value in the interval. So this is Poisson distribution. And then the mean is 1.4 per match. Okay, prior to start the new season, the team took part in, uh, in intensive coaching session. So use the result of the first two matches of the new season to test whether the team scored more than before on average. In the first two matches of the new season, the total number of goals 
uh, scored by the team was six. All right. So this value itself, okay, uh, you have to clarify very clearly uh, before you can start. This one is the mean, which is the lambda. All right. So this one, this value itself is observed value like, because later you are going to use it right to um to calculate the p value. So this is the observed value actually. So you have to be very clear the all the numbers. What does it mean? All right. Okay. So first of all, they want you to carry out the test at 7.5 significance level, uh, clearly stating your hypothesis and also conclusion. And then for part number two, they ask you to uh, state whether the conclusion will be the same if, let's say, they change it become 5% significance level. So we will focus in the first part first. All right. Okay. So now, first step, of course, you need to form the now and alternative the hypothesis of, all right so here uh what is the keyword to help you to form the alternative hypothesis all right so you see of the new season to test they want to test whether the team now score more goals than before okay so they want to know whether they score more or not than before on average so this is the keyword to help you to form the alternative hypothesis all right so first you of course you have to write out the now and alternative hypothesis okay so you can see that the lambda is 1.4 for match here all right so you can write out lambda equals to 1.4 per match All right, then the word more tells you that they want to test whether the lambda become more than 1.4 or not per match. Okay, so this is what you can do. And usually for me, right, when I write out the lambda equals to 1.4, huh, I will write out the, the interval also. So the 1.4 is for per match. Huh? All right, okay, and then... Uh, you, if you refer to the marking scheme, you will realize that actually they might give you a different now and alternative hypothesis. They will look at this one. Okay, Jack decided to use the results of the first two matches. Alright, so because the two matches are, is going to use to be calculated, to, be, to, to calculate the p-value later on. Alright, so sometimes or maybe for some other reference book, they will actually show you that your now hypothesis, they will use lambda equals to 2.4. Then this one, they will use lambda greater than, oh sorry, not 2.4, 2.8. 2.8, yeah. Okay, for two matches. All right, so you can see that the red color one is for the original um, interval that they give you if you want to test, or you can change it become the number of matches that they want you to calculate okay, in the question itself. Both also accepted. All right, so both also correct. So when you check for your marking scheme or when you uh, form your now and alternative hypothesis, huh, um, you, you can decide like, which one you want to use actually. All right, so they will accept both. Okay, so some of you might confuse like, hey, why I write out 1.4 but the book give me 2.8? So this is the reason. All right, they are using the different interval here. This is for per match. This one is for two matches. Okay, and then both are correct actually. All right, so now I want to write out a sentence for the uh, alternative hypothesis. All right, so maybe you can write something like the team now. Score more goals than before. Score more goals than before. Okay, so this is what uh, we have for the first step, okay? You form the now and alternative hypothesis first. All right. Then second step, you want to calculate the p-value. Right. So before you calculate the p-value, 
you should tell them that this is Poisson distributed. What is the lambda actually? So the lambda is for two matches, one. All right, so it is 2.8 for two matches. So this is what you are going to use to calculate the p value now. All right, so your observed value is 6. Okay, so very similar to binomial distribution, you have to decide, uh, should it be greater equal or smaller equal? Okay, so again, the design method also the same also. So you can look at the alternative hypothesis, it is greater, right? So you can put it as greater or equal. Or you can refer to the lambda. So lambda is the mean, right? So your mean is in the center, 2.8. This is the mean on the number line. Then where is the 6? Six? 6 is here. So when you want to calculate the p-value or the area, right? You should calculate it by the side one. So you can see from here, you are getting the probability for x greater equals to 6. Alright, so once you decide already, uh, then you can start now. Okay, so x greater or equals to 6 for Poisson distribution, you can't get the answer because it will continue until infinity. So you have to take 1 minus the probability of x smaller than 6. So E negative lambda, 1 plus lambda plus lambda square divided by 2 factorial until um, 5. Okay, and then from here, you'll get the p-value, which is 0 0.0651. All right, so this is your p-value, and this is my second step. Lah. You get a p-value already. Okay, then we continue to the third step. So for the third step, uh, because this is Poisson, I cannot draw the bell curve shape, uh, bell shape curve. Lah. So I can draw only this one to make my, um, so that I can visualize Visualize it clearer. All right. So from zero until lambda for the number of x, and then this is a one field test on the right. Therefore, my rejection region will be on the right. So I will draw out my rejection region first. This is my rejection region, and the area here is zero point zero seven five. Okay, and then you want to put in the p value into your diagram now. So 0 0.0651 is a smaller area compared with 0 0.075. So this is actually a smaller area. Okay, so this dark blue color is 0 0.0651. And if you look at the borderline of this area, it falls under the rejection region. All right, so from here, you can make a decision now from the diagram. All right, so you reject the now hypothesis. Or if you want to make it clearer again, you can write all out if you want. So you can say that p value is equal to 0 0.0651, which is smaller than the alpha which is 0 0.075, that's the reason, okay? So that's why you reject the now hypothesis. All right, so some students, they, they can remember the result here, then make a decision. But for me, I find sometimes it's quite confusing. So usually I would prefer to draw a diagram to help me. So because from the diagram, I can see clearer, in a clearer way. All right, okay, so you can see that this arrow itself, uh, it is actually the number six uh, for the x. Because here is 0 until lambda, right? So 6 is falls under the rejection region. Okay, so you reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, when you reject the null hypothesis, means that the team now score more goals than before. Okay, so this is what we have as a, a complete test for Poisson distribution. So you can see that the steps are still the same like what we learned before, just that there are a few de uh, details, which is a bit different uh, like this one. You can write out both, uh, either one, sorry, either one, but both are accepted in the marking scheme. All right, then after that, um, when you calculate the probability, the p-value, we are using Poisson formula now, but not the binomial anymore. Okay, the part of drawing graph, everything is still the same. Okay, so the process, everything, 
is the same like actually. Alright, okay, then now we continue to part number two. They ask you to state a reason when the significance level they change it become five percent, the conclusion will be still the same or not. Alright, so very obvious if you see that if I change the rejection region become five percent and zero point zero five, the six will fall under the acceptance region already, right? Okay, if you don't understand that you can draw a graph, you know. Okay, so if you draw a graph, so this one now become 0 0.05. Okay, and then your p value is larger than 0 0.05, right? Okay, so very obvious the result will be different. Okay, so how can you write out the explanation here? So you can write at 5% significance level. We do not reject now hypothesis. Okay, so there's no enough evidence. To show that the team now scores more goals than before. Okay, or you can write also a uh, at 5% significance level, we do not reject our hypothesis because now the p-value is greater than alpha. Alright, so that means that the result will be different. Alright, in the previous case, when 7.5% alpha, percent alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. But for this one, when they change the alpha become 0.05, then you will see that the 6 falls under the acceptance region already. So therefore, you do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so I hope that you roughly understand how to do all this. Alright, so I will want you to try the next example 25 on your own. And then I will again upload the PDF uh, version answer okay, in Blackboard later. Alright, so let us continue to the next one, example 26. Okay, so for example 26, this one is uh, an example that will we will try to approximate poison become normal. Alright, okay, so here let's have a look. Uh, the flies stick to a wet pane at random points. So the average number of flies is 2 per meter square. So you can see that the lambda, this is lambda actually, but this is a lambda for 1 square meter, 1 meter square or 1 square meter. Okay, so this is a lambda. Alright, so a wall with area 22 meters square is painted with a new type of paint. Oh, so that's a typo here, P-A-I-N-T. So which the manufacturer claims that it is fly repellent. So it is found that 27 fly sticks to the wall. So this 27 will be actually your um, observed value. Okay, use a suitable approximation to test the manufacturer's claim at the 1% significance level. Take the null hypothesis to be mu equals to 44, where mu is the population mean. Okay, so here they already tell you very clearly that they want you to use mu equals to 44. Okay, and then the word fly repellent will be the keyword to help you to form the alternative hypothesis. So let us start now. We are going to have now an alternative hypothesis. Your null hypothesis will be mu equals to 44. Okay, so the 44 is actually for what? For 22 meters square one. Alright, because here they said 2 per square meter or 2 per meter square, right? So you are having 22 meters square. So the mean is 44. Alright, so if let's say it is really fly repellent, uh, that means uh, the number of flies should be less, right? So you should have smaller than 44 for 22 meters square. Okay, so you can write out the sentence about the alternative hypothesis. Huh? The new paints is fly repellent. Okay, alright. 
So first step done. Now I want to go to the second step. So to go for the second step, what I need to do is like, Originally, I'm having Poisson distribution, so the mean is 44. This is for 22 meters square. And because of the lambda already more than 15, right? So it can change it become normal distribution. Both mean <coughs> and also the variance will be 44. All right, then you want to calculate the probability. So X and then the observed value is 27. Alright, so again, you have to decide like, you want to put smaller equals or greater equals. So according to the alternative hypothesis, it should be smaller equals. Okay, so since you already change it, become the normal distribution, right? So you have to standardize it. So you want to change it, become Z. Okay, so 27, you have to do the continuity correction. So smaller equals to 27 means that include. So when you do the correction, you have to plus 0 0.5, okay, then minus 44 divided by square root 44. And therefore, you're having z smaller than negative 2.487. Then if you find it out from the normal distribution table, then you have 0 0.0065. All right, so this is the p-value that you get, and this is my second step. Okay, so to go for the third step, you need to draw a bell-shaped curve. Okay, because for this example, we are trying, we are changing the horizon become normal, right? Okay, so where is the rejection region? Should it be on the left, right, or both sides? So for this one, should be on the left, lah. Okay, so this area itself should be 0 0.01. All right, then now I want to compare my p-value, okay, with the area 0 0.01. So the p-value is 0 0.0065, which means that it is even smaller. Okay, so the blue color one is 0 0.0065. And then, very obvious, if you look at the borderline of the area, it falls under the rejection region. Okay, then you can write out if you want p-value is smaller than alpha. Therefore, you want to reject the null hypothesis. Alright, so when you reject the null hypothesis, means what? means that uh, the new pain is fly repellent. Alright, so because in this question they are asking to for to test the manufacturer's claim. So you need to tell them whether the manufacturer's claim is true or not true. So you can just write it like this: the manufacturer's uh, claim is justified. Okay, then where the new, where the new pain is fly repellent. All right, so this is a test where originally it is poison and then we approximate it become the normal distribution. All right, so for me myself, I'm still using the p-value method, p-value approach uh, to carry out the test. Alright, so in marking scheme, usually they will change, become critical value approach. Uh. When you are having normal, then they usually will use the critical value approach. But in exam, they will accept both methods. So you no need to worry about it. Alright, okay, so again, this is what we have for poison and you approximate it become normal distribution one. So uh, you can try another similar example for 27, example 27. And again, check your answer later in the PDF file that I will upload in Blackboard later. Alright, so here we already ended uh, the main types of the hypothesis test that we have. Lah. So in general, we are having three types. Okay, so in general, we are having three types of tests, uh, three distribution. The first one is normal distribution. And we are actually testing the mu. Okay, then the second one is binomial distribution. We are testing the population proportion. And the third one is Poisson distribution. 
and we are testing it also on the population mean. Okay, so there are three. So for the first one, for the normal distribution, the test statistic, if you are using the test statistic to carry out the test, uh, the critical value one, then this is a formula. Okay, but for binomial, you use the binomial formula. Lah. But if when you are having the case where binomial, you change it become normal, right? Then the test statistic will be x minus np divided by square root npq. And then for poison will be z equals to x minus lambda divided by square root lambda. So this is when you want to change it become normal distribution for binomial and poison. So you have to make sure that you are very clear how to differentiate these three types of questions. Because in exam, you might, some students might have problem to identify, oh, this one should I use binomial or this one should I use poison or whatsoever. Alright, so once you are familiar with all the steps already, then you can try out some question which is a mixture one uh, from different different topics then only you know whether you are able to identify the question correctly or not okay so i will stop here for this video then in the next video we are going to do the very last part for the hypothesis test uh, that we are going to count we are going to find the uh, errors in the hypothesis testing